Hey, welcome to the Journey Church. We are an online church for people everywhere. And that is exactly what we wanted to jump into in this video. What in the world is an online church? Some people call it a hybrid church. Some people might say hybrid worship. Some people say things like church online. The terms, while they might be a little bit different, they're really all essentially talking about the same kind of thing. And I would say that all of those terms are talking about a church that largely meets online and in various groups, whether in person or Zoom. And they're doing that instead of meeting in a local building in your uh, local town. Well, before we dive into that, we should probably talk about what a biblical Christian church is, at least in general terms. And man, oh man, talk about a topic that has been studied to death. There have been countless books written, endless debates about what does or does not constitute a church. So in the land of fancy church lingo, this is called ecclesiology. It's kind of a difficult word to pronounce and it's an even harder one to spell. But here's the thing. In a nutshell, this word is just referring to all things related to the study of the church. Now, to add yet another wrinkle of confusion when it comes to church, Christians tend to talk about the church in two different ways. Sometimes they're talking about the big C church, like all believers in history. That often gets referred to as corporate church, right? And it's also confusing because that has nothing to do with meaning that the church is like a corporate business. It's just a term to talk about all believers everywhere. Okay, so that's one way that Christians will talk about church. But most of the time when Christians talk about church, they're really talking about little c church. And people tend to uh, refer to that as the local church. So whenever you're driving around any town, you see a church in town, that's mostly what people are talking about is that individual congregation. If you ask people, <laughs> if you ask people what a church is today, they might say something like, it's a place that they went to as a kid. Or maybe they'd say some of the names of the various churches in their town, like the Lutheran or the Methodist or the Catholic. Uh, probably uh, you're going to definitely get some people they are going to say it's a place where you go to worship God. It's certainly possible that people would say that church is a sham or it's a place that's out for your money or have some sort of negative thing to say about it. And depending on where you ask that question, you're definitely going to get different answers. People in the South, for example, down in the Bible Belt, will certainly describe what a church is in a much different way than, say, folks up in Toronto, Canada. While it's interesting to think about how people might describe the church, I think it's far more important that we let God's Word inform us about what a church actually is. In order to do that, I want to zero in on the Greek word for church that's used in the New Testament. And that word is ekklesia. It's kind of a fun one to say, ekklesia. In the Greco-Roman world, this was a word that referred to a gathering of citizens that were called together to attend to the concerns of their city. For us in modern world, it's probably really similar to what we would call a city council or a, a board of county commissioners. The word means the called out people or the assembly or the congregation. And the main point or thrust of the word is all about the concrete act of assembling people together. And that's why the Greek word ekklesia translates to the English words assembly or gathering. Hey, hey. 
Well, the Bible passages that best describe a church as an assembly are found in 1 Corinthians, and their chapter 11 and 14 is where they show up. And there's a couple of verses there in those chapters that really help us define what a church is and how it functions. The first one is in 1 Corinthians 11:18, and the first part of that verse it says, when you come together as a church, kind of obvious, but the verse indicates that the church is the coming together of Christians to be an assembly or a gathering. The second verse is in 1 Corinthians 14, 23, and it brings us back to the basic nature of a church as an intentional gathering. It says, so if the whole church comes together in the same place. Again, both of these verses really point to the fact that the church is an intentional uh, assembly or gathering of Christians. But it's important to note that church is more than just an intentional, regular gathering of Christians. The Bible also teaches that a church involves a lot of core practices, things like studying God's Word, uh, participating in communion. There's guidance by the leadership of that assembly. There's mutual ministry to each other that is based on each person's gifts. There's also things like singing and teaching and words of encouragement. Now, I want you to take note, it's not that all of those things need to be present in every gathering. It's not meant to be a magic checklist to follow. It's more like a picture of the things that take place as a part of the regular life of a healthy local church to what would we uh, gosh. <laughs> the church I think it's way more important <laughs> Rosie with that in mind I <laughs> well with that in mind I want to share some of the backstory on how we started the journey church online going through the pandemic really forced all of us to adjust I was a senior pastor of a local church at the time, and we were really forced to adjust at the local church level. We adapted to the rapid changes, and then it felt like we just kept on adapting. Then over the next year or so, I really leaned in and started studying some of the new ways that people were connecting, they were building community, they were spending time together, and learning all online. Many of them maybe weren't necessarily new ways, but they were really being adopted by far greater numbers of people and the technology was evolving quickly to meet the growing needs of the people that were looking for these things in the digital realm. Well, at the same time, God was really speaking to my wife and I and leading us to look at some really old fashioned ways of making disciples, person by person, home by home, and group by group. We read several books at the time that were really influential to us. Uh, one was called Mega Church to Multiplication. Another was called Miraculous Movements. And uh, those were both really big for us. I'll leave the details about those books down in the description below. So we read those, we prayed, we studied, we spoke with people that we really trust and respect. And through it all, we continued to get a sense that God was leading us to step out of the box and consider blending some really old methods of making disciples and doing church with some modern technology. The short version is that we really felt like God was asking us to step out and plant an online hybrid church, but not in the way that you might think. You see, the idea of hybrid church wasn't even a term that anybody really had heard of before the pandemic. But during that time, there was a lot of solid, well-established churches that began dreaming of becoming a hybrid church. And really, all that meant was that they wanted to start putting their sermons online. And then it kind of grew beyond just putting sermons online. They actually wanted to put some effort into connecting with people online. Unfortunately, that usually really only amounted to little more than somebody posting a lot of stuff on their social media for the church about what was happening at the physical building. And then most of that stuff was really just telling people online about all the things that are going on at the building and all the reasons they should come to the building. My wife and I, along with the growing team, really sensed God calling us to flip the script on hybrid church altogether. And instead of starting with a physical building and doing stuff online to, to get people to come to the building, 
we decided to start reaching people online, meeting them where they were, and then inviting them to start learning the Bible, uh, to meet Jesus, and encourage them to connect with us via Zoom and FaceTime, email, phone calls, and even some cool uh, in-person meetups. And then, over time, as my wife and I and the others on our team would develop relationships with the people that we meet, we'd start to coach them to read and study the Bible for themselves. And then ultimately, we would help train and support these great people to begin meeting in person with others like them that also want to learn the Bible and follow Jesus and his teachings. And so that's kind of the behind the scenes, because with that, the, the Journey Church was born, an online church designed to meet people really right where they are, to help them learn the Bible and then invite them into a community with others that want to do the same. Well, like any four-month-old church plant, we are definitely a work in progress. Admittedly, we're trying to reach people who are not attending a traditional physical church building. In fact, we really genuinely are looking for people who are curious about the Bible, who are interested in getting to know Jesus, who want to grow in their faith, and maybe just want to try something new. Um, looking for people who, for whatever reason, don't want to go to a typical church. Maybe they've tried several churches and they just really didn't connect. And then beyond that, we're also connecting with people who are going to a church, but they feel called to some kind of a ministry, maybe more outside the box. Another reason we're so excited about the Journey Church Online is this passion we have to create a church family for people who are housebound for a lot of different reasons. Shout out to our friend Frank in uh, Pullman, Washington. Hope you're watching, bud. The other thing is there's over 2 million people who have transitioned to full-time RV living. I, a lot of people didn't realize that. And those people don't have a typical hometown or a typical uh, brick and mortar church that they would be able to call their kind of everyday church. And so we're excited to be a place where that community can come together and grow in their faith and be a part of an actual church that they can call their own. So here's the thing. We realize that we're coloring outside the lines for what many Christians might be comfortable with. But the truth is, it's not about conforming to the comfort of cultural Christians. The goal is and always will be to follow Jesus' command to go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them and teaching them to learn to live out what he taught and then trusting that he is always with us. And the reality is, I really do think that the Journey Church Online can be a group of people who believe in Jesus Christ and come together regularly to learn the Bible and follow Jesus' teachings. I think it can be a church that has leaders that sync up with the type of person that the Bible describes as a church leader. I think it can be a church whose goal is to spread Jesus' message and make disciples who can do the same, and all the while loving God and loving people. If this sounds like something that you'd like to be a part of, then I want to encourage you to reach out. You'll find a link in the description below to sign up for our weekly guide service newsletter. You'll also find a link to our website, and I would say go over and check that out. Read through the blogs, watch some of the teaching that we're putting out, learn more about us, and see if this feels like uh, maybe some place that God's calling you to plug in and participate. So all that's great, but beyond that, we really would like to get to know you. I mean, after all, the goal is to connect and build relationships and keep building the kind of community that you really can call your church. Hey, if you would like to jump on a Zoom, shoot us a message in the comments or shoot us an email. You can send that over to info at jointhejourneychurch.com. And then I want to encourage you, be sure to tune in next week. You're going to meet a really cool, brave lady who had the guts to share some of her hurts and struggles. And as hard as those things were for her, uh, the truth is, I think a lot of you will be able to relate. So make sure you hit subscribe, turn on alerts, and I uh, don't want you to miss it. That's it for this week. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week from wherever we are, somewhere out there.
With that in mind, I <laughs> describe the church. I think it's way more important. <laughs> Rosie. And in the Greco-Roman, <laughs> Greco for us, probably very similar to what would we, uh, <laughs> gosh.